Knock, knock. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it it's so true. Like I said, God will not come in unless you give Him permission. He loves everybody so much He gave you a free will to choose. In what Judy said, your deliverance, your healing is in your tongue. Death and life in the power of your tongue. You've already been healed. You've already been set free. You've already been saved. Your sins are already washed away. It's you receiving that and confessing that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And if you're in Christ and Christ is in you, God bless you, you are, you are healed. You are whole. You already were taken care of at the cross. <clears throat> that word knock, when I looked it up in the dictionary, it says to strike or blows with a fist or on some hard object. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. Anybody's heart sound like that when you hit it? What does he say? We have a heart of stone. And he's going to give us a heart of flesh. <laughs> to rap on a door. Like I said, there's one doorway into eternal glory. That's the cross. There's one doorway that God can enter in and it's the only one he can access into you to heal you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, whatever the need is financially. <clears throat> and that is through the doorway of your heart. To make a thumping, pounding, or rattling noise, like the sound of an engine. Your engine is the Holy Ghost that's in you. And if it doesn't have permission to go through you, to cleanse you, to heal you, to instruct you, Deborah just heard the Holy Spirit say, leave early. I protected her. Got her here safely. I don't know how many people don't pay attention to flooding in this state. They drive right into these roads, and next thing you know, their whole vehicle sliding down the street. You see it every year. It's amazing how we don't learn as humans. That's why we need ears to hear what the Spirit would say. Amen? Amen. Another part of knocking is to find fault, to criticize adversely. Now, there's only one person that has the right to criticize. We can encourage, we can edify, we can rebuke, we can do all that in the spirit of love, seasoning our speech with grace. But when you sit around, sit around criticizing everyone and everything, you're the one with the problem, not them. <clears throat> you have your Bibles, turn to Revelation 3. Now this is Jesus talking about the lukewarm church. What was their problem? They were complacent. They had no needs. They had money. But watch the knock that God puts on them. He says, you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. When you get complacent in your journey because you think you got it all together, you've stopped maturing, you've stopped growing, You've stopped the work of the Holy Spirit taking you deeper into an intimacy in your love affair with Jesus Christ. We'll start in verse 19. Now that's it. You talk about a knock on a church. Look what Jesus said about them. You go back and read that whole part of that chapter. But we're going to start in 19. It says, as many as I love. This is God speaking. I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Wow. You talk about knocking a church. See, lukewarm does God no good. That means you're just sitting back in your recliner and you're all comfortable. I got my bills paid, everything's good, I got money in the bank, and you just start sitting around like that. But Jesus says you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, and you're blind, and you're naked. You know why? Because spiritually you've stopped maturing. You've stopped the Holy Spirit from taking you into being more Christ-like. Your whole life here is designed that you become more Christ-like every day. And the day you're going to get it all together is the day He's coming for you. <laughs> because the day you stop growing, it's time to go home. Because you've stopped the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah. We never stop maturing. We never stop. That song, Falling in Love with Jesus, we should be falling more in love with Him every day. 
as we get to know him. It says in Matthew, what is that, 7, 7, ask and you'll find, seek and bop, bop, bop. But the key to that verse is knock. He says, I'm knocking on your heart, but if you never knock on my heart, I can't show you what's in it. Think about it. It's a reverse. He's knocking here, and you knocking on his. Oh, I got a vision of that yesterday. I said, what? He said, if you don't knock on my heart, how am I going to open it to you and show you how much I love you? Um, think about what God's saying. He's knocking on your heart so he can come in. Why are you not knocking on his heart? It's because you fear him in the wrong way. You're afraid of what's going to come out of his heart. It's never going to be judgment. It's never going to be wrath. It's never going to be condemnation. It's going to be God is love, and that's what's going to come out of His heart towards you. You won't see yourself as a beloved child until you start knocking on His heart saying, Lord, I know I'm in love with you. I know you love me, but show me more of your love. But you're afraid there's conditions to it, and there's not. Amen. He so yearns to show the church how much they're loved, but we don't let God in. Because you still got stuff in your heart that you won't let God take out. I'm telling you, he's knocking. That's all I kept hearing the last three and a half days. I said, what do you mean? He said, you still got stuff. And it was a root. Any root that my father has not planted must be uprooted. You know where the roots are? Not even in your thinking, in your mind, your subconscious, in your heart. Because what goes from here in your mind gets planted in your heart. Boom. That surgery that can only happen through Almighty God. There's a process we all must go through if we really want to be freed up. You should be so free, your feet don't even hit the ground in Christ. If you're truly one with Him, you've let the fullness of God into your heart to cleanse it, to purify it. Because if your heart gets purified and only Him is left in there, there's no room for anything else. But our heart is too cluttered. That's the problem. It's still got stuff. In Psalm 139, Verses 23 and 24. We always must remember something. God is the only one that can fix you. You can go to all the counselors you want. I remember years ago I was in California. A bunch of people spent a fortune on Christian counselors. Some friends of mine. I hadn't seen them in a while. Got together with them. They spent thousands of dollars. I sat down with the Bible took about four hours, three sessions, they were all set free. For stuff they have been battling for years. These were paid counselors. <laughs> I said, what scripture? They said, they, didn't, when they went in the office and they counseled them like a shrink would counsel them. They took psychology. Well, I used to read psychology today. The only psychologist I need is Jesus. He says, my, my, he's my counselor. I don't know about anybody else. But it was such a shame that these people stayed in prison for years and it took about six hours to straighten it all out biblically, spiritually. Because if you don't help somebody spiritually, you're teaching them carnally and you're going to keep yes. them in prison all the days of their life. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 51.10 Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. So on that Psalm 51.10 David knew some stuff. He knew that the only thing that was good about him was God. Psalm 16.2 David said, I have no good but thee, O God. He knew his goodness, and he knew God knew his heart. Mm -hmm. David was a man after God's own heart. We're going to talk about that. But if you don't let God come into your heart and really cleanse it, He knows you better than you know you. That should make you stop for a second and take a thought and go, wow, you live inside of me. You know me from the inside out and I'm trying to keep something hid from you. How dare we? That's wretchedness at its worst. Do you want to know the truth? He said when He talked to the church, you're wretched and miserable. When you don't allow God to clean your heart, you are self-centered, not Christ-centered. Mm -hmm. How are we going to live and walk and talk like Jesus and love the way Jesus loved everybody unless the fullness of His love has purified our hearts? We're going to walk around pointing fingers at everybody. I checked this morning, God is still holy and perfect, and we're not. Sorry, Melissa, you get you close, but... Um, 
No, but you should smile. Because you have a holy, perfect, righteous God living inside of you who yearns to heal your heart and soul and mind. So your thoughts and His thoughts become one. His love and your love become one. His eternal life and your healed life become one. And it can't happen because if you've got stuff in your heart, the fullness of God can't go through you mm -hmm. and show you that you were healed. You are whole. I posted a thing yesterday by a man on Facebook who's working out. He's just like me. I said, well, I ain't that kind of shape yet. He said, you will be because you believe it. See, I don't go by years. People can ask me how old I am. 26. <laughs> Yahoo! I was born June 16, 1991. That's when I was born. First 37 years of crucified. He's not here anymore. He's not allowed to pull me back. I even had a dream last night. Be careful of the past trying to come back into your life because I had a dream about it this morning. These are people from way back when that I've long forgotten about. And I've forgiven them all. But they were trying to get back in the door. And I said, whoa! I sat up at 4 o'clock. I went, oh no, they don't. <laughs> I'm sure most of them have passed by now because they didn't get clean. Hopefully they did. But it's so important. You don't let anything of what was yeah. back in the door. And that's what the Lord's been working on me with. So that my thoughts and His thoughts become one. You have the mind of who in you? Christ. Christ. His thoughts are holy, righteous, pure, true, just, yes. virtuous. Everything that Christ is, that should be your thinking. See, but if you don't let Him in your heart, your thinking is messed up. There's surgery that needs to happen. Amen? Amen. So allow God today who's knocking on your heart to come in in the fullness of Him and don't you dare put restrictions on Him. You're never going to see yourself the way He does unless you let Him take the stuff out that's hurt you. I'm telling you. God showed me this in visions the last three days. If we do not let Him take everything out of our heart that hurt us, I'm talking back to the day you were born. And I'm not kidding about this. And let Him heal your heart. You will never walk in the fullness and fulfill your destiny. You can't. Because you're not truly led by the Spirit of God because your whole heart is not His yet. Only your whole heart can be His if you truly let the healing power of God's love circumcise your heart today. Amen? Romans 2. This is so crucial because we always look at the outward appearance of people means nothing. It's only what's in your heart that matters. God, all through the... I mean, I'm talking from the beginning of the Bible to the end. What is the number one organ He talks about in the body? Heart. Your heart. Your heart. Why do you think it's mentioned thousands and thousands of times about your heart? Because that's the only organ... That if He doesn't fix that, He can't fix you. He can't. He can't do it. As great as he is, he can't fix a broken heart unless we give him permission. He's come to heal the what? Broken heart. There you go. Verses 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. And it's in the spirit, not in the letter, which is the law, whose praise is not from men, but from God. No works of the flesh can fix your heart. No works of the flesh can save you. No works of the flesh can heal you. You confess your healing, but you confess him what he did for you. See, I, I see myself as healed and whole. When I saw that guy on that Facebook post the other day, I was jumping up and down. I said, yeah, there's a man thinking like I do, because God, you said you're going to keep me fresh and flourishing. That's what he believes. Because he said years are just a number. And if you let a number, if you speak, everybody's always saying, how old are you? Are you ready for me? I'm never retiring. I will not retire. When I get to heaven, I still won't be retired. God told me when I signed the contract and I'm going to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, He says, your retirement plan is me. Huh? He says, you'll understand later. <laughs> God tells you things, but you don't get the understanding usually until years later because we're a little slow. Sometimes we don't like what we hear. When he's knocking on your heart, we don't like what we hear. Some of you need to let go right now. You're hurting yourself and those around you.
You don't have the right to keep your heart to yourself. I just told me to tell you that. You don't have that right. Either you're born again and you're a purchased possession of Almighty God. Because if you are, you don't have the right to keep your heart to yourself. He is the only one that can make us right. He is the only one that forgives us. He is the only one that saved us. He is the only one that can heal us. He is the only one that can protect us. Like Deborah, her testimony today is so important because we got a world that's coming apart at the seams. We got psychopaths all over the world that don't know God. But keep praying that God makes wars to cease because He's that powerful. Pray that He expose all the corrupt worldly leaders that are trying to destroy man instead of, instead of building up mankind to be a glorified human race of believers in Jesus Christ. And it is time that the church, that's why we're doing this Wednesday night teaching about tell someone from great glory. Because it's all about getting people into the kingdom of God. That's what the church was established for. To take the kingdom into the ends of the earth. But you're not going to help in that respect if you're going out a wounded soul. Where's going to be your passion? You're going to not have the passion you need to talk to people. You're going to have fear of being rejected because maybe you were rejected. Jesus got rejected so you don't have to be. Oh. Our lives are not about us. They're about Jesus. Holy cow. Mm. We really have to allow Him to change us today. This is important. My insides are burning right now. How dare you hold on to stuff? How dare you? Lord Jesus, come. Mm. It's so important that today is your day that you let go of your heart. And you say, Lord, here's my heart. I open it to you. And you let this Word come in and circumcise and heal your heart and your mind and your soul. We get damaged in life. It's going to happen. Pain comes. Sorrow comes. Mourning comes. But joy comes in the morning when your heart has been healed. Because you rejoice in what He has done to heal you and not in what happened to you. Amen? Mm. Get your Bibles. Go to 1 Samuel. This is such an important part of our lives right here. About not going by appearance. Now Saul had already dropped the ball. He already turned to witchcraft. That's why he tell Christians that a dabbling in astrology and other things they think are so innocent. Mm -hmm. Tell them to look up what happened to Saul. Because once you open the door to any kind of darkness, it's coming for you. It's going to keep pulling you right in. Once that's acceptable, so is everything else. Amen? But now Samuel came to David's family and said, Bring out all your sons. Because Saul was already on the way out. Samuel already rebuked him. But they're all looking at his brothers. They're all looking like it. Just like Saul. He was big and strong. He looked like a king, but he had no preparation to be one. He had all the looks of a king. Saul did. But guess what? He was never prepared to be one. That's why he turned to false gods and witchcraft and sorcerers and other things to help him instead of to God. Mm -hmm. mm. So in verse 7... The Lord says to Samuel, in 1 Samuel 16, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. That was David's older brothers. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For, the man, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you today, church, God wants your whole heart. You're going to see the benefits of it when we get towards the end of this. Of Him having your whole heart. Once your heart is established in God. Once your heart is healed in God. So many people are lacking in faith. You know why? Because their heart's damaged. Faith comes from here. Not your head. Once your heart is settled in God and you're trusting God, you know He's going to guard your heart and protect your heart. Amen? Amen. Don't go there. In Acts 13, 22, when Paul's talking there, and when he had removed him, they were talking about Saul. You go back and read that part of that chapter in Acts 13. He raised, them, he raised up for them David, the son of Jesse, a man after what? Mine own heart, who will do my will. Are you a man and a woman after God's own heart? It's a question we all need to ask ourselves. It is. Because if our heart is truly after his heart, you're knocking on his heart, and you want to see what's inside there. 
And all he's going to show you is how much he loves everyone. The sun rises on the just and the unjust. He has mercy on whom he has mercy and whom he doesn't. That's his choice. He's allowed to make those decisions. We're not. We're to walk in what? Love. Faith works through what? Love. God is love. See, all the other stuff is his job. So when Saul fell, he already had prepared David out in the field as a little runt in the litter. He was the runt of the litter. He was a little guy. He had a lot of successes, didn't he? You know why? Because his heart wasn't fixed on man or man's power or man's threats, but on Almighty God who always delivered him. Always. Forever and always delivered him. And the one time he didn't acknowledge God, he fell with another man's wife. Oh my God. But look how important it is. He's after my own heart who will do my what? My will. If you're not a man or a woman after God's heart, you're not going to fulfill His will for your life that He wrote out in, in, in time before time began on the planet. Do you know that? Because then you're going to put limitations on God. You're going to say, well, if it works out this way, this way, and this way, I'll do this. You are in a non-negotiable position. All negotiations ended with God right here. This cross ended your debate with God. Ended it. I tried arguing with God every which way and then some I came up with. Coming from the streets, you're pretty good at being a con man. And I found out my cons don't work, my excuses don't work, and my debating doesn't work. My debating skills with God aren't very good at all. So let me tell you something. Because he's going to tell you like he tells me. I am. Don't get him to the point where he says I am. Because you've gone somewhere where we don't belong there. You don't belong there. Take it from a man who knows about the chastening of the Lord. Because I want to be the man. You know what you find out when you fall in love with Jesus? You've done nothing to deserve it. You've done nothing to earn it. And you are weak and you are hopeless, and you are lost without Him. If you have one ounce of hope in yourself to make yourself right today, you're in the wrong building. Because I'll never give you that credit. Never. You're my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I love you. But I have to tell you the truth of things He shows me. Or I'm leaving you to the devil. You put your hope in Christ alone. And the reason we don't is because we're still wounded. The reason people spiritually stagnate and become complacent is because they're not healed in their heart. Some of you have roots in here from your childhood and they need to go. I just got dealt with another one yesterday. It happens, folks. None of us are perfect but God, but you have a perfect holy God that cherishes you, that loves you unconditionally, immeasurably, higher than the heavens are above the earth, it says in the Bible, is how great is His love towards us. Why we don't allow that to come and take us over, I don't know. It's out of fear. You think you're going to lose something. You know what you're going to lose? Anxieties. Psalm 139. All those will go away. All bitterness, unforgiveness, remembrances of your past. All that stuff will go away when you let the fullness of the love of God into your heart today because He's knocking. All of you are already saved and healed and whole and blessed and prospered. You don't see yourself that way because you're still trying out to figure out how to get it. It's already been gotten by what Jesus did for you. That's good. It's already. Ooh, I don't get the seed of the Lord. I don't get the seed. I'm gonna preach myself happy today. Thank you for the chastening, Father. Thank you. Psalm 119. Verses 9 through 11. What we celebrated today, when we celebrated communion, the cleansing of the blood, the blood covenant with Christ, <clears throat> in Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11, it is so, how can a young man cleanse his way? You can't cleanse yourself. You can confess, and God does the cleansing. By taking heed according to, what does David say? Your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart 
that I might not sin against you. We cannot hide God's word in our heart when you got stuff of your past in there. There's not room for both. Think about what God's telling us today. Meditate on the word. Old in the New Testament, it talks about how we're to renew our minds because what goes in here goes in your heart. But you can't hide God's word in here. It isn't your foundation because you've got other stuff in there with it. The two don't mix. They're going to do this. God's word's going to come and that what's in your heart, if it's pain, bitterness, unforgiveness, whatever it is, judgmentalism, whatever it is in your life that's hidden there, it's going to push the word back over here where it can't heal you. The word heals you. He is the word. Amen? Amen. And how's it going to go in your heart and heal your heart if you still got stuff in there? Don't sit here and deny that you don't have stuff or we wouldn't be talking about this today. God doesn't give me something unless there's a reason. I spend too much time alone with Him. I have too much fear of Him not to preach what He tells me to preach. There's a new church coming, folks, and it's going to be one that's healed and whole and glorified in the healing power of Jesus Christ's love inside of our heart. What is the Word? The sword of the Spirit. It's the only thing that can circumcise your heart. Yes. If you want the fullness of God in your heart, so you will be led forth with joy and have peace. In Isaiah 50, 55, 12, you'll be led forth with peace and have joy. <clears throat> How are you going to have that in your heart if you got all your stuff from your childhood still in your heart? Or you're still holding stuff against people? Whether you're mad, don't even get mad at the government. They're not worth your time. God's going to deal with our government. They think they're smart and they think they're great. And all these people trying to hurt our country right now, let me tell you something, they're about to be Jesus. And like I said, if God got on my wife this week, she said, pray for their salvation because I'm about to deal with them. When you take your last breath here, it's permanent. And a lot of these people doing evil, they've been so taken over by darkness, they can't even see the light. They don't even, they think the light is evil when it is holy and perfect. Oh, let the light of Amen. Jesus into your hearts Amen. today. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. See, now, if you let that go and you let you can hide His Word in your heart, you'll see how. Now that your heart's been healed, I know all of you are getting healed right now. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Colossians 3. Once your heart is healed and cleansed, it can now be filled with the living Word. Like I said, God's a gentleman. He won't force His love on you. He won't do it. Adam and Eve, <laughs> our two buddies, <laughs> that woman, um, but when they fell, from that point on, you choose. See, God chose a perfect life for them. No pain, no suffering, dominion, multiply, fill the earth. They fell in sin. From that point on, you choose your relationship with God. You choose it, not Him. He's already chosen what He wants to do for you. That's why He sent His Son. Okay? You choose from when they fell, because you were born with Adam and Eve's nature. All you men and women, you have their nature. It's called the sin nature. But Jesus came and destroyed its power, so it doesn't dictate how you live, but the power of the resurrected God that lives within you. The only way we walk on the highway of holiness is living through His strength, His power, His dominion that lives within inside of you. And knowing it's not you that has overcome this world, but the one that has lives in you. That's why it says, greater is He that's in me than He that's in this world. No, the one that's overcome the world is Jesus Christ. The one that defeated Satan is Jesus Christ. But you will not walk in that power, dominion, and authority until you know your heart is settled and one with God. So many Christians struggle, and we all have struggles. I mean, I think if we're not struggling somewhere along the line, we probably think we got it all figured out. I don't think God really gives us that. He gives me a lot of peace, but I have my struggles some days just to remind me how much I need Him. And yesterday was one of those days. We'll leave that alone. Colossians 3, just verses 14 to 17. This is so important. Another word that's mentioned from beginning to end is love. Amen? 14 to 17, Colossians, the third chapter. But above all, <laughs> these things put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in where? Your hearts. 
to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to who? The Lord. Grace in your hearts. Unmerited mercy and favor that God puts upon us all. Oh, man. Amen. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Romans 5, 5, the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. See, everything in the Bible is about your heart. Everything. Everything. And we sit there and we hang on to our heart like it's ours. Are you completely bought and owned by another? Or do you think that organ, is, you can hold that to yourself? How often we, we allow God to do certain things, to change things in us? Some stuff we don't let Him touch. When I was a younger Christian, He was dealing with me on so many issues. <laughs> oh God, how you put up with me? Um, and he showed me my heart one day. And all these little doorways and they had these little padlocks on. You know them old padlocks with the big keys? Like you see in the old time horror movies and stuff. It was comedies they were, is what they were. But it was amazing how he showed me all these locks I had. I'm going, what are you talking about? I'm all right, I'm saved, I'm born again. I got the Holy Ghost. People getting saved, people getting healed. Demons coming out. What's up? Doing food outreach. Got all this stuff going on. Loving people, loving the lost souls. You're wretched. You've got stuff locked up that you haven't let me touch. Holy cow. We think we got it all figured out. <laughs> no, we don't. Let God, who's knocking this day on your hearts, in this house, right here, never mind the people that are going to watch on YouTube and, and the website and all that stuff. Guess what? Right in this house, He wouldn't have me saying this if you didn't have stuff in your hearts in here. He wouldn't have me say it. He'd have me teaching something totally different. Because i got a whole list of stuff I can be teaching and all my study all the time. So guess what? But today he said, this message needs to come out now. Because I'm coming from my church. And my church is going to be without spot or wrinkle. I'm going to purify my church. It doesn't belong to man. It belongs to me. I am God. I died to have one church united. It's another thing the church needs to go back to praying for. We need to pray for unity back in the body of Christ. There's so much division out here. Everybody I talk to, it's the same thing. My church, my church, my church. No, it's God's church. And when somebody comes up and says, man, you need to come to my church, say, no, I don't. I am the church. That'll stop the whole conversation. They don't even teach what's in the book. You don't go to church. You are the church. The church needs to go to the world. Amen? Amen. But they need to see a church that's been healed. They need to see believers that see yeah. the work of God's love in your heart. They're going to know if you're sincere. If you're out witnessing and telling them about Jesus and your heart's still wounded and broken, you're talking from a broken heart instead of a healed one. They need to see a healed church, a yeah. glorified church, with the love of Jesus oozing out of us. Yes. We need to be more merciful than all the rest of the people. You want to be like Jesus? How merciful has He been to all of you? How understanding and long suffering. Like I said, I had my head on my desk yesterday. I said, How do you even put up with me after 26, something years? I still don't have this right. He said, You're a work in progress, like the other 7 billion people. <gasps> oh. <laughs> How many times have I got to tell you? You're never going to get it all together until you get home. Until there's no longer a flesh. You've seen your heavenly body, Dennis. You know what it's going to be like. You've already been in the river of life in heaven. You know what it's going to be like. You've already seen the trees, which is the Word of God that's in you that's healing for the nations. You already have the food that's going to bring healing to the nations and healing to every lost soul. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man, I just saw that. You, every time you read this Word, that's the leaves, which is the Word of God, which comes out of you to bring healing and salvation in almost every soul you meet. I just got a picture of that. Because I stood on those banks with Jesus. Those leaves are the Word. The seed is the Word. You've got the incorruptible seed of salvation living in you. We have everything that God is and has done living in us. And we're not taking it to people. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. I'm going to the world. I don't know about the rest of you. We're here to see this world saved. Yes. 
I listened to, who was it, uh, Perry Stone the other day talking about that. God gave him a vision. He said, you tell my children to get salvation back out to people. Stop all these programs you got. Get the message of hope back in that my son came to save every lost Amen. soul. Amen. Amen. We need to get away from programs and all the other do's and don'ts and start sharing the salvation. Yes. And the only name that can save a person is the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. There is no other name that can break every chain. There's nothing else that can wash away the stain of sin but the blood of Jesus. Woo. Oh, have a good time today. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's amazing. I asked God this morning if I'm okay. Then show me today. He showed me. God is faithful. When you call upon His name, He will answer, honor, rescue, and deliver you. He will satisfy you with long life and let you behold His salvation. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Boy, does He change this whole thing around. Psalm 57. We're going to show you what a heart does that steadfast and faith has faith in God. You're going to see now, once your heart's healed, how David's heart was healed and one with God. What a steadfast heart looks like when oh, things Jesus. are going wrong. Mm. Thank you, Lord. When the enemy is coming and you're getting hit from all sides, watch what a steadfast heart does. This is awesome. This made me jump up and down yesterday morning when I read this. <coughs> a heart that is solely focused on God, has been healed by God, your heart is what responds. Remember, fear is the enemy of faith. Now, a steadfast heart is a heart that trusts God, believes God, believes in His promises, that He is your defender, your healer, your provider, your comforter. He is your all in all. Like David said in Psalm 27, you're the strength of my heart, O God. Look what David says. He's just awesome. Huh. <laughs> they were coming after him. Look what he says, Psalm 57, verses 6 to 8. <laughs> this is about his enemies. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it, they themselves have fallen. See, this how David speaks. When people roll a stone, it's going to roll back on them, not on you. When they dig a pit for you, they're going to fall into it, not you. See, his heart was steadfast with God. Psalm 51. Renew in me a right spirit, O God. Create me a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. <clears throat> Look what David says. My heart is steadfast. O God, my heart is steadfast. Watch what David does with his enemies. I will sing and give praise. Awake, my glory. Awake, lute and heart. I will awaken the dawn. Oh, hallelujah. When people are digging a pit for you, and the enemy's doing his squawking, why are you not praising Him and worshiping God? Yeah. If your heart has been healed, your faith is in Him, your deliverer, your redeemer, your protector, your provider, your healer, your all in all, your champion, your soon coming king. He is your everything. David said, so they're digging a pit. They themselves are going to fall into it because you are mine and I am yours. His heart was steadfast in God. What did he do? He broke out the instruments and he had a party and he danced and he praised God. So the next time stuff ain't going right in your life, break out the music. Start worshiping Jesus. Yes. Because if your heart is healed, that's where your faith is. A healed oh, heart Jesus. believes God is going to take care of yes. everything. Yes. Your job is to praise Him that He's your deliverer. Mm. Oh, I read that yesterday. I jumped up out of the chair and he all started praying in tongues. I said, look at a man's heart who's right towards God. Whose soul was a man after God's own heart. Because once you know God's heart, this world will never affect you again. Do you know that? When your heart is set on doing God's will and knowing Him and loving Him and is committed to Him, you will laugh when people dig a pit. You will laugh when people talk about you. You will laugh when people accuse you and slander you. You know why? Because your heart is fixed on Him and doing His will. Your heart is healed because they're not attacking you but the one who saved you. Amen? You don't have enemies. God does. People talking all the time. Especially in this little town. My God, I've never seen anything like it, I guess, because the town's so small. I can't even go out the door and into a store with somebody yakking about somebody or something. Oh, my God. If they spent more time sharing the love of Jesus, we'd have a unified church. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So the next time uh -huh. the devil comes and things are happening in your life, Awaken the dawn. Look at David. I'm going to awaken oh, the dawn Jesus. with music and worship and praise to my God. Woo! The enemies are all around him. 
Hey, praise God. Because praise, you know what that does in hell? They hide. Because when you're praising Him, you trust Him, you have faith in Him. Now your heart knows that, though. But so many things go wrong in their life. Oh, God, they're running for the hills. Oh, my God, the sky's falling. Yeah, well, praise God, at least Jesus is coming back. Don't go there. Psalm 111, 1. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregations. I'm telling you, churches need to go back to dancing like David danced before the Lord. Yeah. They need to go back to worshiping and jumping up and down and praising our God. Because when we start praising our God, all of heaven comes. The angels come. The glory yeah. manifests itself. Oh man, that's what the church needs to awaken itself and scare the devil right out of all, all the cities in this country. You know why the devil gets away with stuff? Because the churches aren't worshiping God. They got too many programs and they don't have enough worship going on knowing God is their defender. Yes, yes, yes. The church turned a blind eye in 62 and look what's happened to our country. We need to go back to decreeing and declaring this is one nation under God yes. and command our government to bow at the name of Jesus because they're going to have to bow one day. One way or another, they're going to bow whether they're saved or not. Yes. God is coming. Yes. Hallelujah. God is coming soon. I've never had an urgency inside of me like I do for lost souls right now. It reminds me of the days I was in those streets in West L.A. in the middle of a gang war. I couldn't talk to enough people. Guns going off on every corner. I'm out praying for people's salvation. You know why? Because my heart was set on doing God's will. The guns never bothered me. The people and all that other stuff, all the violence going on, all the drug dealing, didn't faze me. I was on a mission to get people saved and introduce them to Jesus. None of that stuff fazed me. Everybody thought I was crazy running around worshiping God all the time. We saw so everybody. You're living in a war zone. No, I'm not. This is God's earth. It's beautiful here. Everybody's getting saved and healed and set free. Families were getting reconciled. Kids were getting Bibles. It was beautiful to watch little kids from 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old children getting filled with the Holy Ghost every afternoon having Bible studies in my apartment. It started with four and it wound up being anywhere from 8 to 12 every day. They were bringing their friends home from school, the little ones. Kids getting saved, going home, telling their parents about Jesus. Not the other way around. Amen. God can do all things if you let Him. Amen. But is your heart set on being pleasing to Him? Is your heart set on loving Him and doing His will? Because if he doesn't have your whole heart, you're doing it for you and not for his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's all about your heart. A couple quick verses. Don't even go there. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That word blessed means what? Prosperity and happiness. You're blessed. Yes. who have a pure heart. You want blessings in your life from God? You want Abraham's blessings? Let God heal your heart today. Mm. You won't have to go out and find them. They'll come to you. The Bible says that when you don't know you commanded, His blessings will chase you down and overtake you. You'll be blessed going out and blessed coming in, blessed in the country, blessed in the city. When you have a pure heart, your blessings will chase you down. They'll literally chase you down. Angels and the Holy Ghost will bring them to you. You won't have to go looking for them. It'll just happen. I lived like that in an apartment for almost five and a half years. I did the will of God. He brought me everything I needed. Like I said, for years I couldn't work because I broke them back anyway, so that was pretty simple. Learned to live by faith. <laughs> I found out I couldn't take care of myself. Hardest thing for a man to do. I was so wired just the opposite. God broke me of self-dependence and self-reliance. Because I couldn't take care of myself. Those first couple months were quite humiliating, if you want to know the truth. But he says, you can't take care of yourself without me. It won't happen. I won't let it. You said yes to your calling. And when you say yes, you can't make it a no. So understand this today. If you want God to bless you, take care of you, say yes. I want my heart healed. I want it whole. We're in a season of reconciliation in families and in people, relationships and everything else, if we allow God to purify our heart. Because if you have a purified heart, you won't let anybody else in there that don't belong. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You won't let anybody in that heart if they don't belong there. Yes. You won't let them in because they don't belong. If a person isn't in your life and they're not edifying and building and strengthening your journey with Jesus, what in the heck you got them in your life for? 
God didn't send them, the devil did. All these bleeding hearts, feeling sorry people for themselves, that pity party stuff, oh my God, how pathetic is that? I was on the phone with somebody with that the other day. I said, don't call anymore. I picked up the phone and said, unavailable number. And I went, I almost didn't pick it up and I did and I was sorry I did because I said some things on the phone. I said, you are not willing to change. You will not change. You're saying the same things to me you said to me 12 years ago, and it broke my heart because I know I can't fix it. I poured everything I could into a person, but you can't fix some people because they're not going to change. So finally I ended the phone call and said, we're done. Goodbye. Bam. Wasn't disrespectful, but I spoke truth, and it was hard truth, and it was tough love. Because somewhere we all have to wake up. But if you've got people in your life that are draining you, why are they there? Why are they there? They don't belong in your life. I'm sorry. We're not here to save the world. Jesus took care of that. We're here to tell them about the Savior. Yes. But don't let people drain you and spiritually suck the life out of you because that's what happens. It's like a slow drip coming out your sides. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, right here, once you have a healed heart, God can do these next two verses. Remember, He showed me the reverse. We're supposed to be knocking on His heart. Yes. So He can show us things to come. What does it say? The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Show Deborah on Friday. Protected her. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Ears to hear. That's just awesome. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Now a healed heart can't receive these next two verses. Because it's still living in pain. It's still living in its past. If you're living in your past, you, you don't go forward. You don't go deeper with Jesus. You can't. You won't even love the way Jesus did. You, you look like you do. And you do a lot of work. You help people. That's all cute and silly. But unless your heart's healed, you can't do these next two verses because these are the days we're in. Where the supernatural is going to be a way of living or you're not. It's going to be one or the other. Isaiah, everybody knows these verses. 43, 18, and 19. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Do not remember the former things, nor consider things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. It doesn't say about you doing, does it? <laughs> it didn't say anything about you going out and making a river, did it? Or doing a new thing. Everything is Him. The life of Christ in you. The fullness of God in you. He so much want, He's going to raise up a new church. Yes not going to be all these different denominational things. It's going to be a church that doesn't even talk denominations. They're not going to talk about it. Because you can't prove to me there's denominations in the Bible. And I've asked different belief systems about how do you get a denomination out of that book? Not one person has given me an answer yet. Because they can't. It's not in there. I know it's not. And so does God. That's why it's going to be God's going to arise in ministries and they're going to do it his way or they're not going to be a ministry. And it's not a judgment. It's just something God's been showing me for 26 years. He's had enough of everybody splintered. I used to work with wood and I remember my wood shop teacher in ninth grade. He took this piece of wood and it was kind of cracked in a few places and he hit it with a sledgehammer and it splintered. You heard it echo and all these splinters came out and God always reminded me, he said, that's my church. They're splintered everywhere. He said, I died that they be one. There was a guy on my Facebook page, and he's a minister. And I never met him, but he was through another ministry. And some of the stuff he posted was good, but I've watched some of the stuff lately. And all of a sudden, it had all the racial stuff put in it. Remember something, there's no such thing as shape, size, nationality, race, or color in the Bible. Jesus died that everybody that believes in him become one. There is no thing as racial division in the church that never should be, that was never designed to be. It's we're supposed to be one with God in Christ. We're all made purified by the blood of Jesus. So never let anybody tell you there should be division in any of the churches because there's not to be. They may worship a different way, do things a different way, but if they're your brother and sister in Christ, don't even bring up the other stuff because it's not there. The healing in the church, the reconciliation in the church can only come from a purified love for God to where we no longer see shape, size, nationality, or color. I don't care what language a person speaks. If they know Jesus, they're my brother and sister. I can commune with them spiritually. If God needs to give me by the Holy Ghost like He did in the book of Acts, He'll give me their language to speak to them if I need yes. be. 
All those languages that day, they had all different languages. None of those men knew those other languages. Bam, the Holy Ghost came in. Who knows all their languages? God. Who lives in you? God. Hallelujah. So if you need to commune with somebody with a different language, He'll give you the gift. Remember something. Pray for oneness and holiness and righteousness and the bond of love to unite the church again. It is so important. Hmm. Next one, when you're knocking on God's heart, we're going to close with this. Everybody knows this verse? Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Jeremiah 33, 3. It is so important. You want to know more. That was Paul's whole mission. He forgot the things which were behind him. He reached forward to the things that lies ahead for the upward call of the prize in God in Christ Jesus. He wanted to know Jesus and be like Jesus more every day. And now that was a very smart man, but yet he considered all his knowledge up till the day he got saved dumb. All of his education, all of his language skills, he knew four or five languages. He was, he was ahead of his teachers as a Pharisee of Pharisees. Guess what? He considered that dumb huh? compared to the knowledge of God in Christ. See, so unless your heart's healed, you're not going to be knocking. We need to be knocking on heaven's door every day going, I want to know more. I want to see more of you. I want to be more like you. But you're afraid because you think God's come to judge you for something because it's still in your heart. He did, he can't, John 3, 17, He did not come to what? Judge or condemn you. But that you be saved through His Son, Jesus Christ. So it's so important that today is the day that you say, Lord, you've been knocking on my heart and don't say He hasn't been because I know He has been. <laughs> God knows some stuff. Stop being in denial to it and let Him have you today. Let Him have your whole heart. Let Him fix the whole heart so you can knock on heaven's heart. God, I'm knocking on your heart. Show me in there. Don't be afraid to go in there because He'll pull you into His heart. Then you'll probably cry for a couple days and it'll be good for you. I never knew crying could bring healing, but it does. Remember, your, your tears go where? Incense bowls in front of the throne. He takes every one of your tears and He holds on to them in His bowls. And He answers those tears with His love and His healing. That's who Jesus is. So when you cry out to Him and you knock on His heart, say, Lord, open your heart. I want to see what's in there. Don't be afraid of it because He's going to change you. Because once you're in there, you'll never hold on to anything again but Him. Because you're going to find out that love is the only thing you really need. Once you're embraced by the love of God, Nothing else after that will even come close to it. You won't even compare it to anything else. Amen. Because there is nothing. How do you compare that to something else? That kind of love? You can't. You can't. He loves us that much. Amen? Amen? Amen. See, that wasn't so bad. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
love and compassion. Help us to fall more in love with Jesus day by day. Lord, we just surrender our hearts to you today. Give everyone the grace to let go. I just break that spirit of fear that's in anyone in here right now that keeps them from letting go of their whole heart. You want our whole heart, but that is truly not yours. Because only you can heal us from the inside out. So, Father, I just surrender us all to you right now. Touch everybody. Soften everybody by thy great grace. Melt their hearts so they hold on to it no longer. Remove those hands I see holding on to their hearts right now. Pull them off. Show them, O oh God, how much they're loved by you. Let us see into your heart, O oh God, so we can see how much we're loved by you and how much we cherish you. Because of your son Jesus, we are beloved children of God. Let him I the seed of the he won't fix you if you don't let it go. He can't heal you and make your whole heart whole and one with Him until you truly confess it and let it go. You've been hanging on, you've been hanging on. It is time to let go so you truly know what freedom is. Know the truth and it will set you free. The truth is Jesus has come to heal your broken heart, set you free, and open up this prison door that has kept you captive for all these years. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just pray a blessing upon everybody in here today. That our lives never be the same, oh God. That as we fall more in love with Jesus, minute by minute, day by day, year by year, until we go home. So our hearts are so filled with your love that everywhere we go, what we share is the love of God for every lost soul we come in contact with. Bless everybody. Heal everybody. Keep us safe from evil, oh God. I thank your angels are by our side, guiding us going out and coming in. And Father, I thank you this day that you understand us so well. You know what it's going to take to heal us and to make us whole in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 